Welcome to our third episode of Sharks. Yes, Sharks is our short series where we will debunk myths and also common mistakes in real estate. Today's topic will be about grants. Correct. So if you are a resale HDB owner uh, or you are looking to buy a resale HDB, I'm sure you have read and you are aware of the HDB grants that are available. So HDB grants are typically CPF housing grants and they are credited all the way into your CPF OA and to use to reduce your loan as well as the cash amount needed. Yes, and basically only Singaporean household can apply for CPF housing grant and only first-timer are eligible for it. CPF housing grant are catered for families and also for single buyers as well. So for singles, you are eligible for singles grant, enhanced housing grant as well as proximity grant. To be eligible, you must be at least 35 years old and to be a Singaporean. For singles grant, there is actually a ceiling cap. Your income must not exceed 7000 And for the enhanced housing grant, your income must not exceed 4500 So this is the chart that you can refer to for the amount. For families, you are eligible for family grant, enhanced housing grant and also proximity grant. So you have to be a Singaporean and your spouse must also be a Singaporean or at least a SPR to be eligible for this grant. For family grant, the income ceiling is 14000 and for the enhanced housing grant, the income ceiling is 9000 so this is the chart for the family grant and enhanced housing grant. So all in all, a family can actually receive up to 160,000 worth of grant for a HDB resale purchase. So based on an article shared in February 2022, there were actually 7,900 of first-timer household actually applied for grants when they purchased this resale flat. So a total of 226 million of grant that has been disbursed to all the first-timer, which is very, very impressive. Yes, that's yeah, a lot. A lot, that's a lot. For HDB resale. Correct, yeah. correct. Yep. So there are also actually a lot of misconceptions about grants, especially when first-timer, when they want to start hunting for a house uh, the very first question is am I eligible for a grant and all that but of course today we are not covering who is eligible right, and who right. is not yeah so today is more about cover the misconception of grants right. so the first misconception is I ask you ah uh, mm. I need to repay back the grants that I take from HDB when I buy the second subsidized flat is it true so this statement is not correct okay when you buy a second subsidized flat uh, you need to pay something called the resale levy so resale levy, the amount is actually based on the size of your first subsidized flat. So if you sell your house after 3rd March 2006, okay, you can refer to this chart over here for the amount that you have to pay for the resale levy. So it's not exactly that you need to pay back the grant, it's Correct. actually because you are buying a second subsidized flat that this resale levy charged. Correct. Yep. Okay, so within this same misconception, there are a few scenarios actually. Mm. So. The first scenario, if the first flat is a resale flat, okay, and I took grant for it, and and then buy a BTO. Yes, this is considered. So because the first house, mm. the first resale flat you took, right? You took grant. So this is already considered the first subsidized flat. Then you buy a second flat, right? It's BTO. Yes, you are required to pay the resale levy. Yep. So if you buy a first BTO, for example, you buy a four-room BTO, and then you change to a 5-room BTO, this is also considered and you also need to pay resale levy for it. Uh, there are some people from BTO, you go and buy a EC, Executive Condominium, straight from the developer. This is considered a second subsidized flat. Yes, you also need to pay the resale levy. So these are different scenarios where resale levy applies, but they are not to pay back the grant that we have took earlier. So the second misconception, housing grant need to return back into CPF account. Correct. You will need to return. So like we mentioned earlier, so the grants are actually credited into your CPF OA before they are used to uh, reduce your loan and to reduce the cash needed. So what happens is when you sell off your house, this grant is taken as the total CPF used. So you have to include the total CPF used plus accrued interest and return it back into your CPF OA. Yeah, but this is to return to your own CPF OA, not to the government. So for the next or future housing, you are still able to use the amount inside there. So the third myth about housing grant, you need or you should use the grant if you are eligible. Not necessary, okay. For example, if you are eligible for it, okay, you will also have to apply for it. So even if you are eligible, but you can also choose not to apply for it. Yeah. So the fourth misconception, which is a lot of uh, 
a lot of our actually first timer ask us about this. The CPF grant is actually used to reduce the purchase price of their house. Mm, okay, while it's true that the grant helps to reduce the total amount that you are going to pay, but it's not a direct discount of the purchase price. Okay, like we mentioned also, okay, it's actually credited into your CPF OA, then it's used to reduce your loan and also the cash amount needed. Yeah, so it's not a like discount like that. Lah. It's actually reduced the outlay yeah. uh, for you to actually buy your house. Mm, your uh. purchase price stays the same. Yes. So the four myths that we have gone through is actually the top four compilation of misconception about grants. So if you have any more topics that you would like us to cover, do PM us. And we have come to the end of today's session. And do follow our social media platform for more updates. And I'm Cynthia. I'm Celine from Homegen. Bring, Bring you dream homes for many generations, generations to come. come.